Now, why is this Heliodorus pillar so important for us? It is a pillar that is still standing there in Vidisha, Besnagar, and people still go there. Now, this Besnagar pillar inscription, or it's called the Garud pillar inscription, it has two inscriptions on the pillar, and they have survived without any damage. That whole pillar is beautifully preserved, except that Vishnu on top has been somewhat damaged. Now, this uh, Heliodorus was a Greek ambassador to the court of an Indian king. And he also came to India before common era. So, I am going on emphasizing this before common era to show the antiquity. So, this Heliodorus is the Greek ambassador to the court of an Indian king. And he comes to Besnagar and he erects this pillar which has Garud on top. Part of that Garud is missing. That's why it's also called the Garud pillar inscription. Now, Heliodorus, uh, he has two inscriptions on this pillar, part one and part two. Part one uh, gives who he is, where he has come from, which king is he a representative or ambassador of, and to which Indian king has he come, and what is the year. So, those are factual details. But part two is very interesting. Part two quotes from a verse of the Mahabharata. Verbatim. So, uh, you know, the scholar H. C. Ray Chaudhary, he was the first one to note the connection between this verse in the Heliodorus pillar and a verse in Sri Parvan of the Mahabharata. He gives the exact reference. And he asked the question this Heliodorus, how does he know this verse? Which means that he was already familiar with the Mahabharata before he came to India. So, is it possible? Then he, uh, Professor H.C. Uh, Ray Chaudhary himself provides the answer. He says that the Mahabharata clearly says that, uh, that the author of the Mahabharata, he ordered that the Mahabharata should be first recited in Takshila. So, there is evidence from the Mahabharata that the Mahabharata was supposed to be recited first in Takshila and Hilodorus proves that he is from Takshila and he has heard the Mahabharata. So, you know, this absolute merger of the literary text and epigraphic evidence, it is so, so fascinating in the entire period that we discover when we discuss Krishna. It is not just not the Hilodorus pillar. Now, this Hilodorus pillar, uh, Alexander Cunningham, who was the director general of the ASI in the British period, he visited it. And when he visited it, he could not see the inscription. He did not know there's an inscription. Because, you know, pilgrims were coming even at that time. The pillar was erected in second century before common era. And in early 20th century, when Alexander Cunningham goes to that site, he finds the whole pillar is covered with vermilion. You know, that lal wo lagate hain. So, that means for 2000 years, people and they did not, people would not even have remembered who is Heliodorus. But they would know that this pillar has been created for an avatar of Vishnu because Garud is there. And they were coming devotedly over the centuries, over the millennium. I mean, it is so fascinating, this story. So, Alexander Cunningham could not make out the date. He could not make out who has constructed it. And he never knew that there was a pillar, uh, there was an inscription on the pillar. Some decades later, you know, there was another uh, archaeologist, Lord Lake. He came there and he rubbed off part of the vermilion and he found some letter. So, he said it is very clear that there is an inscription. And after that, 
they retrieved that inscription and that is when we come to know that this has been erected in 2nd century BC. But Rinku, if I can continue the story of Heliodorus, uh, you know, then after that, that site has been excavated again and again. And the last excavations were in independent India in around 1967. So from the time of Alexander Cunningham, who went there, I think, in 1901, till 1967, archaeologists have been going to that area. And every time they have made new discoveries because, you know, uh, the debris gets buried. The Heliodorus pillar was standing straight. But what are the other evidence over there? So the archaeologists found that there were other pillars. But the top part of those pillars was missing. And they concluded that the other, other pillars were of other members of Vasudev Krishna's family. Sankarshan, etc., etc. Because we found the uh, not, not the column, we found the column, we found the columns, sorry, of uh, Sankarshan and one more. So we found two columns which match the uh, you know columns which are associated with Sankarshan and one more Vrishni person. And in the 1960s, the last excavations that were done, they found that they were actually eight pillars that had been erected. And all those pillars had been erected in a line. They were not erected at random. And they found the remnants of a temple. That remnants of the temple also, I have shown in my book, that this site, it was first, and uh, what they say is that this uh, Heliodorus, he did not come out of the blue and erect a pillar there. They said this site was already, must have already been a sacred site. And he came to, you know, he did not create a sacred site, if you can understand what I'm saying. Archaeologists say he did not come and just create a, a pillar over here in the wilderness. They are saying that this area must have been a very important sacred site, which is why Heliodorus came here. And so there is temple remnants have been found that you can, anyone who's interested can see those uh, the remains of that temple and eight pillars standing in a line. So that means there was a massive temple for Vasudev Krishna and other members, important members of his family. And they found so much more. 